Sundowners is a 1960 film starring Robert Mitchum, Deborah Carr, and Peter Usinov, directed by Fred Zinnemann and adapted from a novel of the same name. It tells the story of a family of sundowners, in other words, people who live wherever the sun goes down, and follows them as they make their living in Australia of the 1920s. The Sundowners is a movie that I've been wanting to check out for a while. I may have seen it once when I was much younger, but if so, I didn't remember a thing about it. But as a huge fan of Robert Mitchum and Peter Usinov, I knew I needed to see it. It was nominated for the Best Picture Oscar, Deborah Carr was nominated for Best Actress, Glynis Johns was nominated for Best Supporting Actress, and Fred Zinnemann was nominated for Best Director. So obviously it was well regarded at the time. And I can definitely see why. It's a hugely entertaining film, but taken as a Robert Mitchum movie, if there is such a thing, it's somewhat unusual. Mitchum is still a tough guy of sorts, but more so a family man who can be a bit of a brawler when given the right motivation. But really, the film is a drama, tinged with some comedy at times. And while it follows the hard life the Sundowners endured, or chose for themselves, it's really a movie about marriage and the changing priorities and dreams that spouses can have, which can begin a gap between them that widens over time. Because our main characters, Patty and Ida Carmody, as played by Mitchum and Deborah Carr, have been married for quite some time. They have a teenage son, played by Michael Anderson Jr., and Ida and their son have begun to grow weary of the wandering and drifting life they've led, and would like to settle down. But Patty, for his part, still thinks his wife is perfectly fine with the life he's provided for her. And so begins a slow process of Ida trying to bring Patty to their side by getting him to take a job that can eventually afford the down payment they'll need to purchase their dream farm. This conflict, which really only boils over a couple of times, is what drives the movie. And the relationship between Patty and Ida is the backbone of it. The performances by both actors are really great. Robert Mitchum is wonderful as the man who wishes that their life can stay the same as it's always been and feels constricted by routine. You can see the disinterest fall over his face as he's forced to take a steady, albeit seasonal, job, and the yearning to get back to being his own boss as soon as he can comes out in his attitude towards his work. And by the way, he's playing an Australian. Robert Mitchum is quite skilled with accents and even some impressions in the interviews I've seen with him, and he does a marvelous job with the Australian accent. That's always seemed like a hard one to keep up convincingly, and while a native Australian would probably pick it apart, I was very impressed. Robert Mitchum also fancied himself a singer in real life, even putting out some records, and he displays this gift here as well. Deborah Carr is excellent as Ida, and while I may not have seen the other movies in which actresses were nominated that year, I think she should have won for her performance here. The element of showing a dedicated, ever-sacrificing wife and mother in movies is well-trod ground, and it could be easy to let that fall into cliché or overly sentimental depictions of such a character. But Deborah Carr never does. You can see the quiet desperation as she fears her husband's opinions will never change, and the desire to have a house where the floor isn't just dirt. And there's a moment after the first act of the movie in which they have delivered a herd of sheep. Obviously, bathing and laundry are not a high priority or even necessarily possible during such a job. And we watch as she sits in their wagon, staring at a woman who has boarded a train. The woman is checking her reflection in a mirror, wearing a spotless, brightly colored hat and dress, and then we cut back to Ida. Her face is dusty, wearing drab, dirty clothing, and you can see the wish for a different lifestyle in her eyes. It's a great contrast and really sums up the character in a single scene. Michael Anderson Jr. is good as their son, and I thought it was interesting that this character has the same desires as his mother, instead of being a rowdy, let's hit the road type of character taking after his father. It is crazy to me that this was only five years before he played a younger brother to John Wayne in The Sons of Katie Elder, the Duke was in his early 50s at the time of this release, and Michael Anderson Jr. is, again, a teenager. Peter Usanov is a lot of fun as an Englishman that is initially hired on as a fellow drover to help Patty with the sheep herd at the beginning, and then becomes the family's Man Friday, sticking with them wherever they go. He's somewhat strangely, I thought, portrayed as a ladies' man, which I don't really think of Peter Usanov as, but I enjoyed the character and the strained relationship between him and Robert Mitchum. The two never quite become the buddies that I expected them to be, instead with Yusinov palling around and becoming an influence on Michael Anderson Jr.'s character. As I said, the movie was directed by Fred Zinnemann, who I think has such a varied filmography. You've got everything from film noir like Act of Violence, which I think is really well done, to the western classic High Noon, to the musical Oklahoma, and then From Here to Eternity, all such different types of films. And with The Sundowners, it's again a very unique film. 
His insistence on shooting exteriors on location in Australia was an excellent choice, and the movie as a whole looks great. We get the almost prerequisite appearances of kangaroos and koalas. Those scenes of driving the sheep through the outback evoke a lot of western imagery in terms of the scenery, and there is a thrilling sequence as they try and survive a bushfire. While Robert Mitchum's stunt double is somewhat obvious during these scenes, it's the biggest action the movie has and is well staged and well shot. And that drive was initially what I thought would take up the runtime of this movie, but that is really only the first act. What follows is the family taking jobs all revolving around the sheep shearing business, and I found that incredibly fascinating. The different jobs that entails, Patty as a shearer, the Yusinov character as a wool roller, and the son as a tar boy, while Ida is the cook for the whole crew. That whole process depicting the backbreaking nature of shearing sheep for days on end, sometimes over 200 a day, then having a competition just for fun, was so interesting. The sheep farming world is one I'm not very familiar with, so I enjoyed all of those sequences immensely. The movie is two and a quarter hours, and is for the most part very well paced. The only time that I thought it began to feel its length was after they have left their jobs there, and the various scenes that lead up to the ending. And the ending is the one part of this movie I have an issue with. I apologize if I'm going to spoil a movie that is over 60 years old, but I feel I have to. If you haven't seen this movie, feel free to skip to the time code below. After working the whole season shearing sheep, the family has enough for the down payment they need. The farm is indeed still for sale, and Patty agrees to buy it and settle down, overjoying his wife and son. And then he panics, gets drunk, and loses all of their money gambling. This is in keeping with his character. His fear of responsibility and getting tied down is a huge part of this man. But then, when they have a chance to still get enough money to make the down payment, Ida says, no, you wouldn't be happy anyway, we'll settle down some other time. And this really bothered me. Again, it's probably a realistic ending. A woman like Ida would want to keep their family together, and she can't really trust that Patty will be happy in this new life. He already threatened to take off on his own earlier in the movie, so who knows what he would have done in the future. But this is a Hollywood movie from 1960. I would have been very okay with the Hollywood ending of settling down and Patty realizing the unsustainable lifestyle he's loved for so long is not right for a man with a family. But that's not what we got. They all laugh together about how they're broke and head off into the sunset. It's not a terrible ending. Again, it makes sense for the people we've spent the last two and a quarter hours with, but it's not quite what I wanted. Something I found interesting was the depiction of how people like this, including other drovers and shearers they meet, were so accustomed to their hard-earned money disappearing quickly, whether by gambling or through some frivolous fun. These were people that were living very hard-scrabble lives and didn't expect to get ahead in life for very long and had just accepted that. It's somewhat sad to me, but this was the price that was paid for the freedom that they valued so much. There is a lot more to this movie and some more minor characters that I could talk about, but I'd say just watch the movie. I think it's a very entertaining and very well-written film. It's a fascinating study of a time and place that we no longer live in, but the relationships and struggles that people have when compromising with their spouses or families are still so relatable and relevant. Highly recommended. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, I hope you'll check back to Hildebrand Productions for more. Thanks again, and adios for now.